Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Some breaking news Friday morning as Josh Gaddis is out at Miami only after one year. This is a guy we've talked a lot about, obviously us being Michigan fans. Josh Gaddis was in Ann Arbor. We have our own opinions on Josh Gaddis and how good of an offensive coordinator he is. Going to talk a little bit about what this means for the Miami program and then potential offensive coordinator candidates for this Miami team. And if I'm an offensive coordinator, I would – be jumping at this job because you know one thing Mario Cristobal is going to bring in talent to this program and you are going to have an abundance of riches to get this offense up and running before we do though just want to say thank you to you guys the support you guys have shown truly means a lot and like my brother and I we love talking football but we just love talking football with you guys in the comment section and the support you guys have shown truly means a lot so if you do enjoy the content consider subscribing to the channel Miami fans Interested to hear your guys' comments. We talked about Josh yet just about this time last year. We talked about Josh Gaddis accepting the job at Miami. You guys were very optimistic. And again, I don't blame you guys for being optimistic. But again, if you enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel. Dill, I'm gonna kick it off to you. Big time takes here. I mean, it's about time. I think I think watching Miami football over the course of the season, I was a little surprised he didn't lose his job midway through. I mean, I yeah. after yeah. that like Virginia game, I think you I think there were grounds to fire him after that game. What did they go like nine, six to nine or something? Didn't score a touchdown against the Virginia team that was given up. It felt like 30 plus pretty much routinely to anyone. So I'm a little surprised, honestly, he made it through the whole season. I'm a little surprised Cristobal even gave him such a long leash to, through the recruiting period. But I, I, this felt like it had to happen. You can't have the regression you had with a guy like Tyler Van Dyke who went from talking about a top 10 overall pick to a guy who wouldn't have even gotten drafted necessarily after this year. And at the end of the day, a lot of that does have to fall on Josh Gaddis as the offensive coordinator. Oh, I think a lot of this has to fall on the Josh Gaddis and Miami fans. If you guys were listening to us a year ago, y'all kind of know my takes on Josh Gaddis. He had a lot of success at Michigan and that offense had a lot of success that last year he was in Michigan. But you look at what Josh Gaddis came into Michigan wanting to do and what where they found their success on the offensive side of the football, it was two different things. Josh Gaddis taking the job was like, we're going to get our athletes in space. It's going to be a speed and space offense where we're going to be kind of throwing the football around and spreading guys out. How has Michigan been buttering their bread on the offensive side of the ball that last year Josh Gaddis was it was there? I mean, two tight end sets running the football against a gnarly offensive line, which makes you question – was that Josh Gaddis's offense that last year in Michigan? Well, that's the problem. Like all, all Michigan fans are convinced that was Harbaugh, like taking essentially taking the reins from him. Because being, it was. All right, your way, we tried it your way, didn't work. I, we're going back to my way. And it, it, I, it, a lot of it more had to do with what Jim wanted to do and what Sharon Moore wanted to do in the development of the offensive line. Like the receiver played. That's one of the things that has plagued Miami the last couple of years, especially last year's wide receiver development. Guess what? It was a problem at Michigan as well. Like you had good athletes coming into Michigan to play wide receiver and they just were not being developed as the like, playmakers at the next level. You look at Miami. That was a pretty talented room. You take a look at some of the guys and obviously Xavier or Shepard going down early hurt because he looked like he was going to be a dude. But Frank Ladson was a guy I was very happy and, and kind of high on as a transferring in from Clemson. Those receivers stunk. Tyler Van Dyke stunk. That offense, like when you watch that offense, they could not get anything going against pretty much anybody. And so when he gets to it, like the question needs to be asked, like Josh Gaddis had one good year as an offensive coordinator at Michigan when it wasn't even his offense that was being implemented outside of that. Like he hasn't been a very good offense coordinator. The other, the other battle he had with Loxley where he was essentially trying to take credit for all those really good Bama years in Loxley and him kind of butted heads were like, who was calling the plays? Whose offense was it? Now, like, you look over at Loxley, he's doing yeah. a pretty good job at, at Maryland. And, again, you look at what Josh Gaddis has done since leaving Alabama. It has been rocky. I mean, been bad. Like, he he won the Broyles Award, but, again, what you just mentioned, I I think a lot of people maybe question where that should have – who should have gotten the credit for that? Was that Sharon Moore? Was it Jim Harbaugh? Or was it him? And, and I, I, I don't get in the business of, like, calling football fans, like, casuals. Because it was even like the, the sports writers, the media writers, that's the people who voted him to win the Broyles Award. But if you're more like in tune with the Michigan program, and I don't blame them. Like Michigan's offense exploded. He's the offensive coordinator. I guess it makes sense on paper to give him the award and give him the recognition. 
But if you're a Michigan fan, listening to the interviews when he was coming into Michigan and what he wanted to do with the offense, and then seeing how the offense was successful, like it wasn't his offense. It wasn't his scheme. It wasn't really what he wanted to do. Now, again, that's kind of my take on it, and I think a lot of Miami fans aren't going to be missing Josh Gaddis incredibly much because, again, that offense was really bad. Let's kind of look towards the future now. Miami, again, we talked about it, and I just said again like four times, but we talked about in the beginning, this offense and this head co- or this offensive coordinator job is – it's intriguing for a lot yeah, of people. It's going to be so attractive because you're right. Like coming out of Miami, that – they're going to be able to recruit. They're going to be able to have the talent. It, it's like, can you, can you be a coach who can div- like put it all together? And, and again, you could be historically good. And at the end of the day, I again, this feels like a really good opportunity for Miami to kind of restart because they didn't really see any falls in recruiting so far. No. That still seems like it's coming along pretty good. Yes. And obviously now Frank Ponce and Josh Gaddis gone, so quarterback coach, wideout coach. An offensive coordinator. This feels like a this feels like a good time for a fresh start for this program. Bring someone else in and just try again because whatever happened last year, just nothing worked. Not, and this, not in my really mind, is a massive, massive hire for Miami. Like th- this, because Mario Cristobal, I love Mario Cristobal. I think he's a damn near top ten coach in college football. I think you could actually make a really strong argument. He's probably included in that top ten. But why is he one of the best coaches in college football? It's because he's, a, he's an elite recruiter. He's not necessarily an, an elite in-game manager. He's not necessarily an elite schemer on the offense or defensive side of the ball. So what does he need? He needs to surround himself with a defensive coordinator, an offensive coordinator, and assistant coaches that are really good at that. And so when you're looking at your next offensive coaching hire, you need to hit on it because Mario Cristobal is going to bring the talent. That's the head coach's job, and he does a damn good, damn good job at that. I'm going to bring in a lot of talent. This offensive coordinator needs to be a guy that's going to implement a successful scheme where he puts players in position where they're going to be able to be successful. Dill, if you were Coach Cristobal in that Miami athletic department, where are you looking here? So just like as a broad view of what traits I want in the next coach, I think you're going to want a guy who is a pretty experienced play caller, just generally. I don't think – I'd be really surprised to see them go – for like a co-OC or yes. someone who hasn't really been the, the primary play caller for a long time, just because again, what you kind of mentioned, Cristobal isn't a hands-on offensive coach. Like at a school like Ohio state where Ryan day is very much directing an offense, he doesn't need necessarily a high powered offensive coordinator, nor does he necessarily really want one. He wanted Jim Knowles. He wanted a guy who could essentially be the head coach of the defense where he could ignore it for all. I guess for all intents and purposes. So I would think that he's going to want someone, first of all, that is someone like a Dan Mullen or any, anyone else with some, some real experience being the, the head guy and be, having a lot of responsibility essentially for that offense. And this is interesting because you're, you are competing with Alabama for an, in the offensive coordinator market. And realistically, they're probably the second option. That being said, there are a lot of good options at the offensive coordinator position. The pool of talent seems to be pretty good. Dan Mullen's an interesting one. I think he'd make perfect sense at Alabama. That seems like just a prototypical signing for Bama. I think there's a a, a lot of really, really intriguing candidates. Joe Brady, we mentioned him in the Alabama video. I think he would be a good fit in Miami, too. He's one of the more young, up-and-coming, offensive-minded head coaches. I mean, he is – he's a whiz kid. And he was credited with Joe Burrow's development and and how that LSU offense looked in 2019, where they were one of the best college football teams we've ever seen. I think that'd be an interesting one. Again, he went to Carolina, guy lost his job there, and then he goes to to Buffalo and was a quarterback's coach. And like he did a decent job. Like Josh Allen played well. I I wouldn't like not hire him because they didn't win a Super Bowl, but I don't think he's going to be getting any like offensive coordinator jobs at the NFL either. I think another interesting one is Marcus Arroyo, who was with our uh, coach Cristobal in Oregon, he was very good at Oregon. He goes to UNLV and t- accepts the head coaching job there. Just lost his job after going what seven and twenty-two. Didn't wasn't very successful as a head coach. I think that would make a lot of sense just because Coach Cristobal is familiar with the scheme and he's familiar with the the, the, the guy. Um, it, it's a big time hire for Miami. I'm interested to hear what Miami fans have to say in the comments section as well. What about because- Joe Moorhead bringing him back? I mean. That that's essentially who Cristobal or or how 
Josh Gaddis ended up there was the connection with Joe Moorhead and, and Cristobal. I mean, he's a guy at, at Akron right now. I feel like, I, I don't know. He, he is the head coach at Akron, but could you get him to be the offensive coordinator at Miami? Oh. I feel like you maybe could. I mean, Coach Prime got Sean Lewis to be the head uh, OC at, at Colorado off of being the head guy at, I, I believe it was Toledo, but Kent State. Kent State. Sorry. sorry. But uh, that, I don't, I think that's the type of guy I would be looking for. Him. I got a good one, and we'll end on this one. Cause older, this is a- like, because even Joe Brady, you talk about him, he's like not really been a play caller ever. He's, okay. he's been the passing game coordinator, essentially. I got a banger one here. And this is probably not that realistic, but I'm thinking taking a nice job in Miami. This guy likes warm weather. He likes nice areas. I believe he's in, in Thailand right now enjoying his, his buyout from the Arizona Cardinals. Cliff I'm Kingsbury. T- I'm telling you, Cliff's not going back to college. Like. I, That'd be a nice hire, but there's just no way he's going back to college and giving up that buyout ascent to take a new job. He's just have some fun. That would be an elite hire. It would be he checks fun, all, he like, checks all the boxes that you said. I mean, this that's like saying Tom Brady should go be the quarterback coach at Michigan. Like, yeah, it'd be fun. I love it, but he's not going to. Cliff Kingsbury, book it. Yeah, I, I okay. To be fair, like that is the problem. We talked about this on the Alabama video. Um, trying to attract NFL talent to come back to college is going to be hard because in this new world of college football is there is no off season. Like you look at it, you start summer camp, you have summer camp. That's the grind. You all know that. Then you're in season. Then you have that break between like Thanksgiving and your bowl game. You're on the road recruiting in the transfer portal and finishing out that, that uh, high school class. You play your bowl game and then you're on the road already back between that and spring ball getting more guys like there's no off season. You're either coaching or either recruiting. And those NFL guys, I don't, I think they get a taste of the real off season playing a lot of golf. And they're like, I don't know if I want to go back to college where I have to be on the road all the time. And if I'm not on the road, I'm surrounded by football. So that'd be an interesting one. Again, Cliff Kingsbury is a guy that he's just lurking. You don't really know what he's going to do, but you do know he's one of the more talented offensive minded head coaches in the world. And so that's an interesting one. Again, I'm interested to hear what the Miami fans say. So if you guys got a good candidate, drop it down in the comment section. Again, Miami fans, you guys have been awesome. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We will be talking about the offensive hiring they make. And again, really, really good 2023 recruiting class. They're off to a good start in 2024. Going to be a really interesting landing spot. And I think a landing spot that is going to pique an interest of a lot of offensive play calls. We I mean, if, if Josh Gaddis's contract's any indication, they know you're willing to pay. I mean, what did Josh get? Like 1.6 a year? That's a ton for an OC. They'll pay. They'll. I mean, Miami's shown that they're willing to to pay to to make this thing work. So again, appreciate you guys checking us out. If you do enjoy it, consider subscribing. We'll talk to y'all later.